That's how you know this video is not for kids. The Nutcracker, classic ballet in two acts, three scenes, music by Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky, choreography by Lev Ivanov, uh, is by the night to December 17th, 1892, blah blah blah, sugar plum fair, yeah, who cares. Christmas is this month, and while I personally hate Christmas, I'm obligated to talk about it because if I don't, YouTube's algorithms will crucify me like the deity of the religion to which this holiday is most recently ascribed. Since that's the case, we're gonna look at the other of the two most popular and well-known ballets in existence, The Nutcracker. First off, let's get something straight about this ballet. It has three scenes worth of dancing and one scene worth of plot. Originally, the whole thing was based on a German fairy tale in a book called The Nutcracker and the King of Mice. The ballet's plot is basically like a cut and paste of the fairy tale. If, during the cutting, several pieces were lost, including the entire ending of the story. So first, I'll give you what the ballet's story has, and then I'm gonna give you all the pieces that are missing. So, The Nutcracker. 1892, two acts with three scenes total. Music by Tchaikovsky, choreography by Marius Petipa and his assistant slash intern Lev Ivanov. First staged in St. Petersburg at the Imperial Marinsky Theater. Not as successful as Tchaikovsky's other works like Swan Lake and the Sleeping Beauty, but nevertheless became super popular in the West around the later part of the first half of the 1900s. What's it all about? Act 1, Scene 1. Clara and her brother Fritz are at a high-class Christmas party held at their own house, expectant as children are about the presents that they are set to receive. It's Christmas Eve, but I guess in Russia they had a tradition of opening all their presents the day before Christmas. I don't know, but anyway, she and her friends party a little bit as the adults watch and muse at the children. And there's, of course, some dancing here because, obviously, so the children pair up and do, like, a little variation for their parents, and then the clock strikes nine, which is apparently the universal children's bedtime. But since it's Christmas, though, the kids are allowed one more hour. Shocker. Which is fortunate because in waltzes in an old man with one eye holding just a mess load of presents. This is Drosselmeyer. No, not that one who is like that one weird uncle that you can't ever figure out whose side of the family he's actually from. The kids love him though because he just like has cool presents for them for no reason in the ballet version but for actual real reasons in the fairy tale. But anyway, presents. Clara gets a cool doll and Fritz gets a toy soldier. They're ecstatic about the rad but in this version totally mundane and normal presents that they get when the clock strikes 10. So Clara throws a tantrum because she wants to keep partying, and in order to get her to stop throwing a fit, Drosselmeyer produces another present. It's a nutcracker, a standard household appliance that would normally be lame and boring, except this one is in the shape of a toy soldier. Kinda makes me think that this gift was not originally meant for Clara, who did not show interest in her brother's non-kitchen appliance soldier. But she is super into it though, and expresses instant infatuation. Not suspicious at all, Drosselmeyer, you completely mundane person, you. So Fritz makes fun of Clara for falling in love with her stupid toy, and after a sibling spat, he throws the nutcracker across the room and breaks it. Clara is mortified at this and loses her mind, but it's bedtime now regardless of her dramatics. The adults perform what I can only describe as like a lullaby dance, and the children are put to bed. All of the adults, Drosselmeyer included, leave the main room of the house, and the lights go out. The clock strikes midnight, so you know some stuff is about to happen. Because the clock has already struck twice in this story, so there has to be an implicit theme of time, thanks to literary tropes that are older than dirt. The stage is still dark, but lights come up a little bit to show Clara sneaking down the stairs to check on the sorry state of her newfound love in the form of a wooden soldier who breaks nuts with his teeth. She's never been in the big family room in the dark before though, so she's a little freaked out about it when suddenly... armed with swords and wearing military jackets. In this version of the story, they're fighting against a regiment of toy soldiers, led by none other than the Nutcracker. 
Clara, who at this point becomes instantly mesmerized at the two armies of soldiers waging tiny battle, watches with rapt attention as her beloved wins honor on the battlefield by going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the, in this version, only single-headed Rat King. The Rat King gets a good blow on the nutcracker, so Clara, now invested in the outcome, takes off her shoe and murders the Rat King with it. The battle won by the hand of this benevolent but unceremonious god, the toy soldiers salute her. The Nutcracker bends his knee to her, and Clara is pleased at her participation in the victory against the apparently bad guy mice. She curtsies to the Nutcracker, who has, through some kind of weird magic, grown to full human size and is made of human and not wood. Now, in some stagings, this is the part of the story that preserves the creepy bit, but the original staging did not. Unseen by Clara, Drosselmeyer sits creepily on top of the clock and watches as this whole thing takes place. The presence, or lack thereof, of Drosselmeyer in the scene makes a huge difference regarding how the plot can be interpreted, but in the version that we're talking about, he is not there. So the Nutcracker, now a real boy TM, insists that he should reward Clara on account of her having saved his life with her god shoe, and she is way into the idea. Whoa, 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 back it up there, bucko. In universe, Clara is a child. In fact, the initial staging of the ballet at its premiere even had her part played by a literal, actual child. Later stagings replaced her with an adult because adults can dance better than children, but in-universe, the fact remains. Anyway, the two of them run off into the darkness hand in hand. Act 1, Scene 2. There's a bit of a time skip or something, because as the lights come up on a kingdom covered in crystalline white snow, Clara and the Nutcracker are aboard a magical boat, just kind of floating down a stream. It's apparently the Snow Kingdom, one of only two kingdoms that Clara gets to see in this version of the story. In the original staging, it's not even a separate kingdom at all. It's part of the next kingdom. The Snow Queen and Snow King, or as the case may be, the Winter Fairy and Snow Prince, come out to dance for Clara. Clara watches. Then some snowflakes come down and do some rad quarter de ballet stuff. Clara watches. There's a theme from here on, so look out for it. Anyway, somehow she realizes that the snow is actually powdered sugar, and the ice is rock candy. Turns out this place is not the Snow Kingdom at all, but it's part of the Kingdom of Sweets. No, not that one. And Clara is suddenly a princess too? Cool. She and the Nutcracker, who is a prince, I guess, get back on their boat to sail deeper into Cavity Land. End of Act 1. Now, I'm not quite sure why, aside from the questions of timing, the two previous scenes are part of the same act, but that's what we get. Act 2! The scene opens on their magic boat, which is magic only because they say it is, but which is otherwise performing only the functions of an otherwise completely normal boat, arriving at the palace at the heart of the Kingdom of Sweets, where exist several sweets-themed beings. No, not those ones. The supreme ruler of this kingdom is the Sugar Plum Fairy. No, not that one. Who greets the two of them warmly. It's assumed at this point that the Nutcracker is part of this kingdom somehow, since he's got something to do with nuts, and back in the day, nuts were part of sweets a lot more often, rather than being like a protein source. The Nutcracker regales the Sugar Plum Fairy with the tale of how Clara the War Goddess used her magical gigantic shoe meteor to decimate the forces of the evil Rat King. Impressed by her apparent powers, the Sugar Plum Fairy shows Clara to a throne that happens to be conveniently there for her so that she can watch a whole bunch of dancing happen. Among the classic acts that happen for the pleasure of the destroyer deity Clara are the mechanical wind-up doll who does the chocolate dance, which Clara watches, followed by a totally not racist depiction of an Arabian dance, which is supposed to represent Eastern coffee, and which Clara watches. Even worse of a racist caricature is what Balanchine literally calls a quote-unquote bearded Chinaman, I hate this man, whose dance represents quote tea from the Orient, he and an even smaller partner do comical dancing to make Clara laugh. Clara watches. Following this is the only dance that's not explicitly food-themed, the famous Waltz of the Flowers. It should be noted, however, that the flowers that dance it are also rock candy flowers, so 
I guess it counts. Clara watches. Now it's the Sugar Plum Fairy and her hitherto non-existent partner's turn, and they do a rad pas de deux, followed by each of them doing a solo act. Clara watches. Finally, all the dancers that have already done their thing come back and dance, what I guess is supposed to be like a farewell dance to Clara. Clara watches. She thanks the Nutcracker for bringing her to this super cool kingdom and sits on her throne a little bit. The end. No, 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 not, not like the end of the scene or the end of the act. I mean the end of the whole damn ballet. See what I mean when I said that all the plot is in act one, scene one? This feels like it was a popular anime in the late 90s to mid 2000s, and then it got canceled instead of getting enough seasons to tell its whole story. What even is the point of most of this plot? It's a thin disguise under which is the excuse to have people do dances. Look, Tchaikovsky, if you just wanted to have people do some dances, you can just say that's what you want. We don't have to have stories in every ballet. So, what's the difference between this version and the original fairy tale? Oh boy. Strap in. First, Drosselmeyer is Fritz and Clara's godfather, and is also a talented clockmaker and toy maker. His first gift to them is a literal clockwork castle, complete with tiny people moving inside. Two, Fritz and Clara don't have a fight about the Nutcracker, which technically belongs to the both of them. Instead, they crack a bunch of nuts with the doll until its jaw breaks, so Fritz isn't at fault in the original. Three, there's a third sibling, a girl named Louise. Who the hell is she? Where is she in the ballet? Well, technically, some stagings of the ballet do have Louise, like for instance, Nevada Ballet Theater's Staging of the Nutcracker, where Louise is there and she's just kind of a twat. But there's no story reason for her to be there. She doesn't do anything in the plot. All that happens is that when the Nutcracker, the nephew, walks in in the original uh, it's so dumb! It's so dumb! The whole thing is stupid! Clara, whose name is Marie in the original, imagines that she sees the Nutcracker's face comes to life when she's allowed to stay up late to quote-unquote care for her new toy. Number five, Drosselmeyer sits on the clock at midnight to prevent it from striking. At this point, Clara has never left the scene, so this is another important plot point that we will talk about. Number six, and this is important, the Rat King has seven heads. Number seven, when Clara throws her shoe, she also faints, falling into their toy cabinet and breaking the glass, which cuts up her arm super bad. Number eight, a whole ass time skip happens, where a few days later, after having woken up to try to tell her parents about the radical fight she witnessed and how she came to have cut her arm, Drosselmeyer comes back with a completely repaired nutcracker. So this doesn't even happen on Christmas anymore. Number nine, there's also an entire subplot story about why Nutcrackers look the way that they do, which is an actual huge, large portion of the story's volume. Read it for yourself if you want to. Number 10, throwing the shoe didn't actually kill the Mouse King, it just stunned him, and there is a rematch between Nutty Boy and the King later on near the end. He asks Clara for a sword, but like, like toy-sized? And so that night, he comes back to Clara with the seven crowns of the Mouse King, probably covered in horrible mouse blood. Number 11, the real story doesn't make much of a big thing about Clara's trip through the doll kingdom, which is not the candy kingdom. Number 12, there is a story after the voyage through this weird kingdom where Clara's tried to tell her parents what happened, but not only do they not believe her, but also forbid her from talking nonsense about her weird dreams. Number 13, Clara, who in this story is still canonically seven, sits silently in the living room of her house while Drosselmeyer one day is fixing one of her father's clocks. She swears that if the Nutcracker were a real prince, she'd love him despite him looking like a Nutcracker. There's a loud boom and she faints. When she wakes back up, her mother is under the impression that Drosselmeyer's nephew has just arrived from traveling abroad in the military or something, but Dross tells Clara that by uttering the words of true love, she broke the curse that was detailed in the sub-story about why Nutcrackers look like they do earlier and made him a real boy again. That's weird. They get married, and Clara becomes the queen of the doll kingdom. Number 14, Clara is eight by the time she becomes the queen. The, uh, ripe old queenly marrying age of eight. So now that you know the plot of the ballet, 
Here's a big thing. Remember, when I mentioned the whole Drosselmeyer sitting on the clock thing and that came up a couple times, right? That little detail changes the story greatly. If Drosselmeyer is in fact there, then what happens to the toy soldiers and the rats is a product of magic allowing Clara to see the war between the two factions, and participating in the conflict irrevocably makes her part of the world she's watching. She travels with the Nutcracker on a boat that takes her from her normal life in the normal world into a real-ass wonderland of fancy fairy stuff and then lives there forever, ostensibly, until the end of the story. But if Drosselmeyer isn't there, however, then we can assume that between the time wherein we see Clara leave to go to bed and the time where she creeps downstairs, she's fallen asleep and everything, top to bottom, that we see after that is part of a dream and that we don't get an end of the story, really, because she's got to wake up sometime. There's a lot going on there. Now, let's talk about the differences between the normal staging, normal, traditional staging of the Nutcracker and the one that Nevada Ballet Theater is doing. In ours, one, Louise, the third sibling, is there, so that's a thing. Two, her grandfather is the one that accidentally breaks the Nutcracker, so that's completely unrelated and also not useful to the story at all. And this is the biggest this is the biggest thing. Like we don't really know that Drosselmeyer is like some sort of clockmaker or something like that. We just know that he comes in with weird toys and all that. And I guess we're supposed to understand that he's an inventor because like in the version that we're doing, there are mechanical dolls that he brings in to show the kids like, hey, here's a cool toy. And there's like the Columbine doll and the Harlequin doll that do like a little sort of like robot style uh, pas de deux thing. There's a mechanical bear apparently, just like a huge full ass sized bear that he brings in and they did they does a dance that's normal right once the fight with the rat king happens and clara throws her shoe it kills the rat queen not the rat king and then the nutcracker wakes up and is a real man and so they go into this other kingdom now in the original version, it was supposed to be the Kingdom of Sweets, but in the one that we're doing, it is some sort of, like, fairy-based kingdom of, of seasons, which makes me, who plays D&D, think that they go from Clara's house into the Feywild, because the first person that they meet is the Winter Fairy, the Fairy of the Winter Court, which is probably Queen Mob who normally is not a cool person, but in this version of the story, I guess she is, and they do a dance, it's Queen Mob and some other guy, the Snow Prince, I guess, and there's no candy-themed stuff at all in the rest of the ballet. At all. So they go through the, the Kingdom of Winter, the Kingdom of Snow, whatever it is, and then they get to the rest of the kingdom, which is vague and undefined. And then you have the Autumn Fairy, the Spring Fairy, and the Summer Fairy hanging out with the Sugar Plum Fairy. And you note that after the intermission, when Act 2 starts, you never see the Winter Fairy again, which leads me to believe that she is Queen Mob because she's been banished from the Fae Court and so she can't come in and hang with the other fairies because nobody likes her anymore. So when Clara and the Nutcracker came down, she might have been like, hey, you want to watch us do some dancing so that you can tell my sisters that I'm cool again so that I can come back to the Fay Court? But so you've got Queen Mob there, you've got the Sugar Plum Fairy who has no real place in this version of the story since nothing is themed with chocolate or candy or anything. But whatever, she's important, she has to be in the story because it's the Nutcracker, and if you ask someone who's in the Nutcracker, you know that they've got the Nutcracker and the Sugar Plum Fairy because of the song, The Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, that shows up in every Christmas commercial anyway. They have a bunch of like the, the country-based dancing, just like in the original, except for none of them are sweets themed at all. And then they've got Mother Ginger who shows up wearing like a humongous dress that's like actually like a piece of stage that they bring out on wheels. And then like her dress opens up and a bunch of kids come out and they do some dancing and then they go back up into her dress and then they leave. And that's 
weirdly metaphoric for something, I'm sure. But then it's the end. That's that's the end. They do some more dancing in the Sugar Plum Fairy and uh, the Nutcracker do a pas de deux, and then Clara is also there and she gets to dance a little bit. And then it's the end. So there's still no resolution to this story whatsoever. Nevada Ballet Theater is putting on their production of The Nutcracker this December. You can check it out at nevadaballet.org if you want to get tickets to it. There's, like, value pricing going on as well. If you decide that you want to come and see this thing, send me a message, and I can probably get you discounted tickets. But anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope that now you know a little bit more about The Nutcracker and what it is and what it was and maybe of some other variations of what it is as well but thank you for watching i hope that you enjoyed it if you did the like and subscribe buttons are waiting just below this video so that you can click on them you can also follow my socials there's a facebook a twitter and a discord in the description box do that thing i will see you guys in the next video hopefully i'm putting out more DD stuff as well so yeah i will see you next time